for tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Friday evening, November the 28th, 1986. Thanksgiving weekend, teaching and deliverance camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. This is tape one of three tapes by Jack Harris of Beckville, Texas. Subject, seven levels of submission. Praise the Lord. Well, it's a privilege, a privilege, to have these wonderful ministers to minister to us, to bring us the word of life, teach us the ways of salvation and healing and deliverance and the kingdom. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and in this earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. And it's a joy to have Brother Jack Harris to come and minister this evening. He's from East Texas, one of them there tall Texans. And it's a joy to, to have him come and minister the word of the Lord and to, and to teach us that which the Lord has shown to him. And uh, he may or may not say anything, but he's, it's a joy to have this flag back here. And uh, he appreciates it, and I appreciate it. But uh, he and... Uh, 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 Brother Speed Wilson, Colonel Speed Wilson, which uh, has been here many times, and some of you know, uh, are two of the most decorated living people left in America of World War II. Um, and he, this man here is one of the ten most decorated men of World War II, and has received almost every honor this government has to give. And it's a privilege to have a man of this caliber that serves God with the capacity that this man does, and the ability that he has to minister the word of the Lord and to bring in and have an understanding of God of God and his kingdom that is that God is about to bring in the reality among to, to his people. Amen. I love you. I appreciate Lord. you. Love Jesus. you, Brother Miller. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. You're working. Yeah, we uh, now turn it on. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Always when Brother Miller is introducing me, I, he does it so uh, he's so charitable that I can't hardly wait to see what I'm going to do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouths filled with laughter and our tongues with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord's done great things for them. Oh, the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. He that soweth in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Praise the Lord. I, I really feel the good presence of the Lord this day, and I'm counting a great privilege to be here. I, uh, I just so enjoyed the afternoon service and, uh, and this one uh, thus far tonight. I know that God is moving uh, by His Spirit. Uh, he's speaking many things to many people tonight. I'll tell you something that we are making the, king, the message of the kingdom of God, which is one that must be preached to all nations as a witness unto Jesus, so the end of the age can come, uh, is making great inroads. I, I do know that this message of deliverance, message of the kingdom, message of overcomer, whatever you want to entitle it, but it's making great inroads. Uh, you know, it's, it's making religious people mad. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Yeah, the reason it's making a lot of religious folks mad is because when we teach people the kingdom principles, they won't be so easy to rip off. <laughs> and and 
you know, they won't be so, so gullible because uh, the Spirit of the Lord will direct them. So uh, it hits where it hurts, and, and uh, some, of the, uh, some of the religious systems and men uh, of religion are getting nervous. You know what's happening uh, is that we're binding the strong man of the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Without even being aware of it. When do you think all the turmoil in government? Uh, e- even a good man can hardly make it in government today. <laughs> you see, uh, and he can't make right decisions. He gets the best um, counselors and advisors that he can get, but invariably he gets bad advice. What's happening? I'll tell you what's happening. Uh, the sons of God, the ministry of sonship is, is binding the strong man of the house. We're getting ready to plunder his goods. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what's going to happen? The kingdoms of this world is going to become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And, and the beauty part of it is that nothing can stop it. If God be for you, who can be against you? God be for us, who can be against us? For he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, and is even now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep of the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear, O house of the Lord, and know that the Lord thou God hath gathered thee together unto his Spirit, yea, and unto his word. Now I have given thee a strong word, saith the Lord. Yea, I have given thee a sure word uh, and a good word. Yea, and I have anointed that word with my spirit, saith the Lord. And the word that thou hast heard uh, in this meeting uh, will make you to grow. Uh, It will bring maturity, saith the Lord. Yea, it will cause uh, expansion, uh, saith the Lord. Yea, and the word that you shall continue to hear uh, through this meeting uh, will be beneficial to you. Therefore the Lord would say unto thee, uh, do not... Uh, do not freeze yourself in uh, at any plateau. Yea, uh, do not anchor yourself anywhere, but rather uh, remain flexible. For hast thou not uh, read the story uh, that the Lord told about the old uh, sheepskins and, and uh, the new sheepskins? Yea, thou must uh, have an open heart, uh, for the Lord thou God shall call unto thee. Yea, deep shall call unto deep this night, and ye shall know the truth. Uh, yea, that you are hearing uh, the word of the Lord. Thou shalt know the truth. Uh, yea, that thou hast been called, uh, even uh, destined, uh, yea, for a great and lofty calling in God. Yea, uh, as the Lord doth unfold uh, his word, in His purpose here, uh, even through this meeting, line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here and a little there, thou shalt surely be instructed uh, in the ways of the kingdom. Yea, thou shalt surely come to the fullness of deliverance. Yea, and thou shalt surely allow that the spotlight of God shall be turned on your land. Yea, and a search for the last spot uh, shall be uh, determined, saith the Lord. For I shall shall raise up a people uh, in my own image, uh, yea, in the likeness of the Son of God, yea, a people that shall stand tall uh, in statue, yea, shall be a great people, and shall do exploits, saith the Lord thou God, yea, for I have purpose that I shall do uh, such a thing, saith the Lord. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, let your 
mind be given over to the Lord uh, this night. Yea, have your spirit be captivated by Him, uh, and and thou shalt know that the Lord uh, speaks directly to your spirit this night, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the lovely Lord our God. Oh, yes, praise the lovely Lord now. Know that the Lord doth enshroud thee, yea, and ministering angels surround thee, yea, and even uh, move about in your midst this night, uh, saith the Lord. Yea, I have come uh, to spread a, a protective blanket over this uh, camp meeting, over this meeting, this gathering together, over this camp, saith the Lord, thou God. Yea, and I shall surely make myself uh, real unto thee. Thou shalt surely know your God, uh, even in a greater measure uh, than you have, have known before, saith the Lord. For I shall move mightily among thee these days, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. I bless his great name forever. For he is from everlasting to everlasting. Great and mighty things await us. I'll tell you, the Lord is speaking to my spirit and to my heart every day uh, of, uh, to sound the alarm. It is a day of great urgency. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and uh, I believe that uh, we're just on the uh, brink of, of something great, some, something really great transpiring uh, that will give us uh, the boost that we need. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To walk into life. And hallelujah. And our blessed King, hallelujah, will, will come to lead us to victory. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. I'm preparing. I'm not preparing to go anywhere. I'm preparing to stay. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm preparing to rule and reign with Him. First comes the suffering, and then comes the reigning. There, first comes the training, then the reigning. No training, no reigning with Him. Hallelujah. I think all for years, maybe from time immortal, men everywhere have, have, have waited uh, during their lifetime for some magical moment to come uh, that would make a great, uh, that would do something great in their lives, make great changes. Well, I know there, there are hundreds of thousands of people in the world today uh, that is expecting some great event to take place uh, instantly uh, that will change them from just a carnal Christian, <laughs> hallelujah, to, to be in the bride of Christ or whatever their hope is. Uh, and I say to you that there's no magic moment like that. No matter uh, what your concept is, there is no magic moment uh, that is going to make any, uh, any great big change in you all at one time. It's line upon line, a little here and a little there. Hallelujah. You say, well, what about the translation of the sons? All the sons that will be translated likes just but a mite uh, being translated when it takes place. Nobody will come from infancy to mature sonship just because uh, the Lord has appeared and the translation has took place. And if you're going to a wedding, you get ready to go to it. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, you don't just uh, stumble in like a lost person, do you? There, there is a preparation stage, whatever is your hope. You want to know what my hope is? My hope is that I will walk into life. That is my blessed hope. If you'd asked me what my blessed hope was 25 years ago, I'd have said, I hope I die and go to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that was a blessed hope. But now I've found a more blessed hope than that. Instead of hoping I'll die and go to heaven, I hope I'll live and reign with Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And that's my blessed hope. Yeah, there'd be no mistake about that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad for the privilege to... To speak to you tonight, I I was uh, kindly wondering what we might um, what we might minister on if we ministered. And Brother White this afternoon, he when he opened his, uh, his scripture reading, I 
I knew that we were, that's what I would uh, have to speak on if I speak. So I, I will. I'd like to say that we're <clears throat> glad to see all of you again that we have seen before. For you that we haven't seen before, we're glad to meet some more of our family, great big family of God. We're glad to have some folks with us from our home church uh, in East Texas uh, this evening. And my wife has, has uh, come with me on this trip, as she often does, but she often does, and then she often doesn't. She came this time, and uh, we're glad that she could come, and uh, the uh, other folks from our church. Always our good pleasure to be here with Brother uh, Glenn and, and Sister Irma. We, we do love and appreciate them. Uh, they are, uh, I believe they're great in the kingdom of God. I thought if Brother Glenn stands here beside me and yeah, I kind of dwarf him, I think, and, and that's after I lost 50 pounds. And, <laughs> and I said, I said, yeah, but uh, in this body that Brother Glenn presents here, there's a great big old spiritual man. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, Amen. I'll tell you, he's big on the inside. He's got a big, big heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And, and all of it. Uh, I never have detected any of it leaned any way but toward God. I'll tell you, I do appreciate folks like uh, uh, like this. <clears throat> All right, let me give you the title of the message that I'm going to minister on, and I'll give you kind of an outline, and we'll then we'll just go. All right, <clears throat> it's seven levels of submission. And when I came on the uh, submission. Point was, brother, as you remember, started his um, text in First Peter chapter five, I believe it was, about verse five, uh, and he began with submission. Then he kindly dwelled around that. I really, I really appreciate the way that you presented that that word from the Lord this evening, that ministry, my brother. Praise the Lord! I could tell right away that you knew exactly what you was doing and and <laughs> and where you was going. I, I could tell you it was my kind of folks. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right? Uh, I'm, uh, this is seven levels of submission to bring us to. It depends on where I'm at, what do you want to come to. We, I often say to bring us to sonship, because I'm, I'm a sonship preacher, as you know, or a kingdom preacher, if you'd rather call me a kingdom preacher. So I can entitle it, uh, it's seven levels of submission that will make us deliverers. I like that. It's seven levels of submission will make us overcomers. You like that. If seven levels of submission make us sons of God, I mean mature sons, are seven levels of submission that will bring us to the kingdom. It's all, it's all the same thing anyhow. And so uh, we will entitle this uh, seven levels of submission to bring us into the kingdom. And uh, you like that? All right, <clears throat> let me <clears throat> just tell you uh, that I'm going to be very scriptural with this, as I always am. Uh, uh, I, just, I just preach in the book, praise the Lord. I told you about the time that I, uh, the preacher friend of mine uh, and I were driving overnight all night, and we listened to all these uh, preachers out of Del Rio, <laughs> all night, you know, one right after the other, and they had 30 minutes, uh, and all of them was about the only thing they was doing, trying to get an offer, and, but every one of them was uh, guaranteeing us that they was the only one that's preaching the truth, you know, and so finally after about a half a dozen of them, way over in the morning, this one comes on with a, with a great voice for radio, and, he's, and he assures us uh, that the rest of them hadn't it right, but he said, I'm going to preach to you right out of the Bible for 30 minutes. Well, in the next 26 minutes, he gave us his name and address 17 times <coughs> and assured us if he didn't hear from us, he, he wouldn't be on the air next week. <laughs> Incidentally, he didn't hear from us, <laughs> and I hadn't heard from him anymore either. <laughs> And he finally concludes without having quoted one passage of Scripture or without having read one. And my preacher friend said, but tell me what did he do? And I said, well, he's the only one that done what he said he's going to do. He said, what? 
I said, well, he said right in the opening statement he's going to preach out of the Bible, and he never did get in it. So, <laughs> so, so I, I'm going to preach in it. <laughs> Not out of it, but in it. Hallelujah. All right. Let me give you some scriptures uh, to, to feast on here. I, I may get in trouble with the very first one. It's Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. I'm going to give you these fast for your notes. Uh, this simply says for wives uh, to, to submit to their husbands. Uh, there are seven commands of submission and, and tells you what to submit to in the New Testament. And here they are. Uh, and one place I was... I was uh, mentioned this passage, and uh, I preached uh, what I thought was, you know, uh, taught a fairly good lesson, I thought, and, and then I gave uh, wave to questions, and one lady stands up and said, are you saying uh, that women ought to submit to men? <laughs> now, so I tried to wiggle out of that, and, um, you know, give her the scripture on it, and it, uh, it doesn't say... Well, anyhow, I thought about halfway had her pleased on that, and, uh, and she... She, she held up her hand again, and she came at me from another direction. But, and, uh, and then I gave her a fairly what I thought was satisfactory answer to that. She hits me from another angle. Nobody else can ask a question. So finally I just said to her, I said, Well, sister, have you ever uh, considered the fact that you are just opposed to the word submission might indicate that you have a rebellious spirit? <laughs> well... That ended the question and answer session uh, between uh, she and I, anyhow. All right, the next one uh, is in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. We are to submit to those who have rule over us. Doesn't matter who it is. Somebody said, I'll submit to God, but I'm not going to submit to the pastor. Well, the only way you can submit to God is to submit to the pastor. You see, it's kind of like going to the army and saying you'll submit to the general, but you pay no attention to the uh, first sergeant. <laughs> He'll be paying some attention to you. Uh, you see, uh, yeah, you, you'll get his full attention. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, the way to submit to God is you have to do it through his, you, you, you submit to, to those that have rule over it. You submit to his, to his law, to his um, well, to his ways. And you have to submit to God has a chain of command. But I teach that when I teach divine order. And I, I, won't, I won't get into that much of that. All right, in James, St. James chapter 4 and verse 7, you submit to God. Well, we all would do that all right. I mean, that's not too difficult. All right. Then in First Peter chapter 2 and verse 13, uh, we submit to every ordinance. Every ordinance of man for the glory of God, he says there. And uh, I'm not going to turn over and read all these because we're saving time. In First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5, where our brother started uh, this evening, Brother White, uh, and uh, here we submit to, uh, you submit to the elders, and uh, you, you submit. In Ephesians 5.21, you submit one to another. Isn't that beautiful? And in Romans chapter 10 and verse 3, we submit to the righteousness of God. Submit to the righteousness of God? Well, yes, you know. Uh, the Bible said that Abraham believed God, and God uh, imputed it to him for righteousness. He had imputed righteousness. Now, <clears throat> I think I have received some imputed righteousness uh, while I'm being made. But while I'm receiving imputed righteousness, uh, you know what's happening? I'm being made... We are being made the righteousness of God in Christ. And while He's got us in the, in the making, He is giving us, imputing to us some righteousness uh, that is going toward our becoming the righteousness of God in Christ. God has great plans for us. We have entered into a lofty kingdom. Hallelujah. And the lofty calling is on our life. All right, now, in Ephesians chapter 2, no, no uh, excuse me, Philippians chapter 2. And I'm going to say here, I'll, I'll just make some statements here. I'm going to say that there is no greater submission found anywhere than the submission that Jesus had to the Father. 
There is no greater submission, and Jesus uh, is our pattern. He is, he is our example. Do you, is that what you think? There is no greater submission anywhere than that of Jesus to the Father. Uh, in St. John chapter 8 and verse 29, he, he says uh, that he that sent me hath not left me alone, because I do always the thing that pleases the Father. Hear him say, I do always the thing that pleases the Father. Well, that don't leave uh, that doesn't leave anything that would displease the Father, does it? If he does always the thing uh, that pleases the Father, uh, all right. Let's <clears throat> let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter. I mean Philippians chapter two and verse five. Let this man be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Here the word submission is not used, but the principle certainly is employed, isn't it? Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, uh, of things in heaven and earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. You have to do it right here, uh, right amidst all the opposition that there is. You have to become, you have to be perfected here. Amen. You have to become blameless, harmless, sons of God, without rebuke. That is, no blemish, uh, above reproach. In the midst, and you do this not on Sunday morning, but you do this in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Oh, I'll tell you, it's getting lighter. Uh, the world situation is getting darker, but as it gets darker, the light gets brighter. You know what's happening? God, uh, darkness is mingled, darkness and light is mingled. But God is separating. You see, in the beginning it was mangled, and God was the only one that knew it. And he said, he, he said, let there be light. And the light separated itself from darkness. But, but since that day, uh, it has been mingling again. But God is now separating again the light from darkness, and the darker it gets out there, uh, the brighter it gets in here. Hallelujah, you, you, you see. The, the, the darker the world situation uh, looks, the brighter the kingdom situation becomes. Hallelujah. All right, now, now we'll get, we just gave you those scriptures uh, to show you that we're going to stay right with the scriptures here. Now I'm going to give you the seven levels of submission. Number one, you, uh, let me give you my outline in case I don't get through. I, I never get through. Anyhow. All right. Number one uh, is submission on the level of defeat. This will unfold as I unfold it. Oh, look, you so just, you. Number one uh, is submission on the level of defeat. Number two is half-hearted submission. Half-hearted submission. Number three is submission to a command. And number four uh, is submission to a request or a suggestion. All of these, this is a progressive um, uh, uh, thing here as we come to. And you'll find yourself somewhere in here, is perhaps. All right? Number five is submission that has an eager anticipation in it. Your submission with eager anticipation. Number six, uh, it is the ministry, submission of the ministry in silent support. As I said, it'll kind of unfold when I unfold it. 
And number seven, finally, uh, is, what do you think this is? Unconditional submission. Unconditional submission. Finally, is what you have to come to. But it begins, uh, as we said, uh, in, uh, in the seven steps, number one. All right, let's go back and we'll look at number one then. We said uh, that the first level of submission is submission on the level of defeat. Now, I, I, let me kind of explain this a little bit. I, I don't think that many of us would have ever come to the Lord except that we came in, uh, we, we were defeated in our lives when we came, weren't we? Uh, most of us had pursued something uh, down a road of, uh, of darkness and, and a road of despair. Some of us had come to our wit's end. And in the spirit of defeat, we came to the Lord. Now, that's good. That's good that one knows where to turn when he is defeated. This is the first uh, preliminary stages of submission uh, is when one learns to submit to God in defeat. When he has gone his own way uh, and done his own thing uh, and has wound, it up, has wound up uh, in great distress, uh, if from there, as some have said, if from, uh, if from here you'll, you'll call on the Lord, uh, the Lord will hear you. That's good. But, but you can't go through all of your Christian... That's a good way to come to God. Then let me say that after we come to God, there are many people yet that have been walking uh, supposedly with God. That is, they've been saved. They accepted Jesus as a personal Savior years ago. And the only way they know how to submit to God to this present day uh, is in defeat. They, it's the only way that Israel knew how to uh, submit to God, the whole nation. Uh, the statement is over and over again that when Israel sinned and turned away from God, uh, that uh, God would send pestilence. Uh, and the pestilence would get so, um, so awful uh, that Israel would repent uh, and submit herself to God again, and God would hear and raise up a deliverer. Or uh, by some miraculous means, God would deliver them again. And then the same lesson. They never did learn as a nation. They could only submit uh, in, uh, in defeat. And um, it, it, this is, as we said, uh, this, it's good if you can do that. But it's a very, it's just the beginning. We must learn to submit uh, on all the other levels uh, that we will come to. Do you, have you known somebody? Perhaps we'll uh, shake the, we, we may shake everybody's limb. But, you know, uh, you've known people uh, that just kind of use God for, just kind of push Him off in the background until some great catastrophe happens, and then they will come to God. They submit to God. And as I said, we most of us came uh, with a defeat uh, in defeat when we first initially came to God. But I trust that over the years we have learned to submit to Him uh, on higher levels uh, than just when we are, are desperate, uh, you know. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Saul, you remember the first king of Israel? He was a man like this. Uh, the only uh, submission that he ever knew to God uh, was that he was in dire, desperate need. And death was staring him square in the face, and there was no other way out. Then he would make a gesture toward God. Yeah. You know, as he, uh, uh, as he did. The Bible says in the, what, in the 28th chapter of 1 Samuel, and, uh, and verse uh, 6, I guess, uh, that, that, when Saul sought the Lord, he couldn't hear from him through a dream. God wouldn't send a prophet. The Ewan Thummim, uh, he couldn't get any answer from God. God wouldn't speak to him. Uh, but, but it was because that he had, well, it was because that he had in desperation called for the Ark of the Covenant. You know, he'd ask him uh, to bring up the, the Ark in the 28th uh, chapter of 1 Samuel. We might just... Turn over here and glance at this a moment. 
Um, in the sixth verse, he inquires of the Lord, and the Lord answered him not, neither by dream, nor by uh, Urim, nor by prophet. He couldn't hear from God. In the, uh, in the, 20, in the 14th chapter of this same book, and verse 18, notice here, And Saul said unto Ahiah, Ahiah is a priest, he said, Bring hither the ark of God. Then the Bible says, For the ark of God was at that time with the children of Israel. Uh, all right, now he is only bringing up the ark of God, but he hasn't paid any attention to the ark of God. He doesn't care about God, uh, but, he's, but he's being overcome by invading forces of the Philistines. Uh, and, uh, and he's taken a beating, and he sees that defeat is imminent. And so he, in desperation, sends for the ark, or gives a command to bring up the ark of God. But about that time, uh, Jonathan has already got the inspiration, went over and rousted the enemy, unbeknown to Saul, and Saul hears all the victory shouts, and he says to, in the 19th verse, uh, to the priest, he said, withdraw your hand. That's all right, don't need him now. I mean, in essence, that's what he's saying. He could only submit uh, as he, uh, in the spirit of defeat. Now, isn't it strange as you read the story of Saul, though? Read the story, uh, Saul's uh, story, and then read David's. If you read the biography of both men... And you could read it without being prejudiced either way, and just get the facts. Uh, it seems to me that Saul comes off better than David. And yet, uh, God says that David is a man after my own heart. Now, Saul was a rebellious man, headstrong, but he didn't do some of the things that David did. But what was the difference then? David found favor with God, and Saul never could find favor with God. The difference was uh, that David had a submissive heart. He had a repentant heart. And David, and God said, David is a man after my own heart. David looked at his own black heart uh, and seen now out of it could flow adultery, murder, conspiracy, and uh, you just keep naming it. And David was guilty, and he said, Lord, really, truly, I don't want a heart like this. I want one like yours uh, that is pure, and nothing but pureness flows out of it. And God said, there's a man after my own heart. So, uh, he had no, as I said, he had no mind for God. Look, here it is. Here's a story in the 14th chapter here, First Samuel, and verse 3. Uh, well, verse 2, Saul tarried in the uttermost parts of Jebea under a pomegranate tree, which is in Megron, and the people that were with him were about 600 men. Now, this is while they're waiting uh, in preparation for this battle, where they're going to be defeated. And Ahiah, now this is his priest, Ahiah, the son of ah Ahitad, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, wearing the upoid. And the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. Well, I don't know if you know just exactly what happened here, but when it tells who this priest is, he is the nephew of Ichabod. And Ichabod is the son of Phineas, uh, who was the son of Eli, and they are the ones that lost uh, the ark in the first place. And they're the ones, uh, th this, this, this man's Phineas uh, is the one that that God judged, and um, and he was killed along with his brother. You remember, and his wife gave birth to Ichabod about the time that Eli learned of the disaster there. And um, but the, to make the story short is uh, that Saul has a priest here uh, that the Spirit of God has been removed for two generations. He has a high priest uh, that the Spirit of God departed from two generations back. <laughs> you see. Uh, Ichabod means God has departed. He, he, no, no spirit. And uh, this is uh, Ichabod's uh, brother's son. 
which is two generations. There's been two generations since God has been with them. And he has a priest here uh, that doesn't know God. Indeed, he doesn't know God, and the generation ahead of him didn't know God. And uh, uh, so that's, that's how that Saul uh, would uh, submit only when he was in uh, dire trouble. The psalmist said in Psalms 56 and verse 3, What time I am afraid, I'll trust in God. Well, that's good, but what about when you're not afraid? I mean, yeah, hallelujah. Uh, well, he said, I'll praise the Lord at all times. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. That's better, isn't it? Praise the Lord. All right, let me show you another uh, a person here, better known perhaps, or more colorful anyhow. His name was Samson. You know, the Bible uh, speaks about Samson beginning in Judges 13 and, um, and goes through uh, the 16th chapter, 13, 14, 15, 16, four chapters uh, that he speaks of. Uh, of Samson. It takes to tell about Samson. He begins by telling uh, that his birth was announced. God was going to raise up a deliverer. That's what we are supposed to be, is deliverers. God was going to raise up a deliverer for his people, Israel. And so the angel of the Lord appeared unto Samson's mother and said, though she was barren, the angel said, you're going to bring forth a son. And, well, you know the process there, if you're over in, in the book of Judges. Uh, the, the process uh, is that finally uh, this son is born. She tells uh, this, uh, the wife here, uh, the mother of Samson, just how to care for this man. What I'm going to say is that Samson doesn't seem to be too religious, but he sure comes uh, in on a religious note, doesn't he? His parents uh, must have been uh, very saved and, and very sanctified because the angel of the Lord appeared to them. And, um, but Samson uh, was a... What was the matter with Samson? You know, in all of his... Taking four chapters to tell about him, he prays two brief prayers. And that's all the mentioning uh, that there is of his dedication toward God. Did you ever notice that? That's all, the, that's all there is. Just two, two brief prayers that are recorded. So I would say from that that I don't think Samson was a praying man. I don't think he was very dedicated. I think uh, that he was anointed of God and the Spirit of God would move upon him and he enjoyed that Spirit moving upon him. And he would do great exploits. But, but while the Spirit would enable him to do great exploits, it never, it never built any principles, any character into this man. You see, the Spirit... You, you don't know submission until... Somebody said, don't talk to me about submission. Uh, let's talk about my liberty. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you know, uh, you can, if you abuse your liberty, you can find yourself uh, under more restrictions than you've ever been under. You don't have any liberty until you're ready to submit that liberty. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, this last great uh, move of God... Uh, a lot of people found their liberty, uh, and there is a liberty in Christ Jesus. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. In us who? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh, what do they do? They do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh can't please God, but you're not in the flesh, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, and the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. 
And if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit which dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we're debtors, not to the flesh. If you live after the flesh, you'll die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And we have not received the spirit of bondage again unto fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, and the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children were heirs, heirs to God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus, our brother said this evening. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. We're joint heirs with Him. Praise the Lord forever. Oh, for I reckon the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly, but by reason of him who subjected the same in hope. For the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now. And not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, do groan within ourselves. We're awaiting the adoption with the redemption of our bodies, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. What man yet hopeth for that which he has? But if you hope for that which you have not, then do you with patience wait for it. Hallelujah. Yes, there is a liberty uh, in God. Uh, and, and with the breaking out of this last great move and revival uh, that the Lord has sent, you know, you know that history uh, shows that revivals uh, normally last about 15 years. And they peak and then take them a while to decline. This last revival uh, is that older, older. And you know that it's already peaked as so-called, as that uh, term of revival. But oh, the, my Lord, the fallout. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, um, they found the liberty, but then they had to exploit that liberty. They felt honor bound to exploit that liberty at the expense of offending uh, the weaker brethren. Now, I just have to say uh, that if that is the case, uh, that they've just brought themselves under more bondage than they were ever under before they uh, found their liberty. Hallelujah. You know, uh, you have to be ready to submit your, to forego your liberty because of the weaker brethren. Is this, is this scriptural teaching? Hallelujah. It is, isn't it? We're going to have to, oh, I'll tell you. It's, it's, I believe in the prophetic word tonight, or the interpretation said, uh, spoke of a way and said, uh, just a few will find it. Yes, Jeremiah said in chapter 2 and verse 15, I'll take you one of a city and two of a family and bring you to Zion. I'll tell you it does. It is. It is kind of thinning out, isn't it? Praise the Lord. All right, we're talking about Samson and how that he would not... Uh, submit only in defeat. The two prayers that is recorded that he prayed is one after he had uh, made the great uh, conquest with the jawbone of a mule. He, slay, he slays a thousand and he's about to starve for a drink of water and he entreats the Lord to give him a drink. Uh, after giving me this great victory, am I going to die of thirst, he says. That's the nearest thing to a prayer uh, that was recorded uh, for him yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God answered it. He knows only, He will only submit in defeat. But He is, He, He was ordained of God. Even His birth was forecast. Hallelujah. And, and God's not going to allow him, uh, to be completely wasted. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know. I threw you my fastball in, didn't I? Praise the Lord. All right. You see, so the next time that we, all right, what happens to Samson? The Bible said uh, that he goes down to, what did he go down to Gaza? And he finds uh, a woman there that he, he likes 
very much. No, he goes to, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And, uh, and the, you know, he had become a great enemy to the Philistines because God would enable him to tear up their cities and, and just do great things. And, and it's said God gave him strength, but he, he couldn't get any character built into this man. So, uh, well, anyhow, uh, they, the Philistines sent to Delilah and say, there's some kind of a secret to this man's strength. You find it out and we'll... we'll We'll take care of him, you know. And, and so Samson tells her, she asked him, and he said, Well, if you were to bind, his, uh, bind him with seven uh, green whips that never were dried, he'd be as weak as another man. She tried it. He broke them like, um, uh, you know, like nothing. And uh, then new ropes, he told her. He broke them uh, like nothing. And, and finally, uh, he said, if you'll weave the seven locks of my hair into the web. Now, he's getting, you're getting close now, Samson. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you see the, the digression here? How that he, he comes in? All right, so she does that, but he comes out of it. So finally, the Bible said... That, she to, uh, that he told her in verse 17 of the 16th chapter, he told her all his heart. Yeah, he finally just filled his heart to her and told her wherein lay his great strength. His great strength lay uh, in the sign of the Nazarite. His brother Miller was talking about that mark in the forehead of the intercessors. God has certain marks uh, that he placed. His sign, uh, his strength, uh, lay in that. Uh, as long as he had the sign of that Nazarite uh, that his mother and father had taught him, uh, he would have great strength. But if that were removed, he said he would be as weak as any other man. But he really didn't know that himself. Because he really thought, you know, when she shaved his head, called him to come get him, you know what he said, don't you? Well, if you're over there, you can read. He said, I'll just rise and go out there as at other times. He didn't know that the Spirit of God had departed from him. I think there are a lot of people in that uh, condition tonight uh, that they don't know uh, that the Spirit of God and the power of God has departed uh, from their lives. They, uh, they're still, hallelujah, amen. Well, uh, anyhow, the Philistines come and catch him. And they put out his eyes. You know the story. They grind, he said, and the Bible says, this sounds kind of pitiful, but he did grind in the mill. He, uh, Samson did grind in the mill. He's grinding corn down there. Now, I, ha I always get a, a vision of one of those uh, grinding things. There used to be one laying out here. It's an old surf mill. Still out there, ain't it? Yeah, you hook a mule. We, used, we had one when I was a boy. You hook a mule to it and... He pulls it around, around. Some of you have seen that, haven't you? Well, I think that's the kind of a grinding thing that they had down in that basement where old Samson was. And they had him pulling that. You just go around, around the circle, you know. You've been there, and you see God trail beat out that deep where the horse uh, walked around, around it, just pulling that thing and grinding, making syrup or grinding grain or whatever uh, you're doing with it, you could... Uh, and uh, I have an idea if that's the kind of a thing that Samson was... Here he goes, around and around that thing with his eyes punched out. Doesn't have to see where he's going now because he's tied to that thing just going in a circle. And, and an amazing thing begins to happen to this man. His hair begins to grow. He, you know, and he begins to think about God again. And it comes time, after I don't know how long he's been there, but it comes time that the Philistines are having a great, um, they're having a great party. And, uh, and on, the, on the entertainment schedule, uh, Samson uh, is going to be the life of the party. He's going to uh, make sport. Uh, for them. And they say uh, that this will prove that Dagon uh, is stronger than Jehovah, uh, that their God is greater than the God of Israel, greater than Samson's God. And the Bible said uh, that Samson came out and he made sport for them. Well, I don't know, but I think in the meantime, while Samson has been in confinement, 
uh, uh, they've got a young lad uh, that has brought him his meals. You know, it says this young lad led him into the Colosseum. Now, this Colosseum's built like that, um, like the uh, the uh, dome uh, stadium at uh, in Houston and, and all over the country now, and it had a balcony up in it. And the king had invited thousands of his lords, his senators and congressmen and so, and their wives. And, and they were having great festivities. And they led out Samson. <clears throat> and Samson uh, spoke to that young man and said, Young man, where is the... Uh, I'm kind of tired. Where's the, where's the pillars to this building? And the young man led him over to... Uh, evidently, it had two massive pillars right in the middle of it that held up the balcony and held up all of the, uh, everything else. And uh, Samson felt of one of them. He said, is this a pillar? He said, yeah, and here's another one. Well, it was evidently about like this, maybe. And I feel like the Samson stood between them and just pushed them out from under it. When he, but before he did that, uh, he prayed. This message is continued on tape two and three. Our website is www. LakeHamiltonBibleCamp.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you. For tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www. LakeHamiltonBibleCamp.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Friday evening, November the 28th, 1986. Thanksgiving weekend teaching and deliverance camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. This is tape two of three tapes by Jack Harris on seven levels of submission. And Samson uh, spoke to that young man and said, Young man, where is the... Uh, I'm kind of tired. Where's the, where's the pillars to this building? And the young man led him over to... Uh, evidently, it had two massive pillars right in the middle of it that held up the balcony and held up all of the... Uh, everything else. And uh, Samson felt of one of them. He said, Is this a pillar? He said, Yeah, and here's another one. Well, it was uh, evidently about like this, maybe. And I feel like the Samson stood between them and just pushed them out from under it. When he, but before he did that, uh, he prayed. Here he prayed. Now, now, now here's, here we are. Back in teetotal defeat, life was all but wasted. Walked in rebellion to God all the way through except for a few uh, uh, choice moments. And here, in complete defeat, with his eyes punched out, he had been doing the menial task of grinding at the mill, which was the job of a slave. And from that position, he found the will to submit to God. Hallelujah. And he said, Lord, avenge me now of mine two eyes, and let me die with the Philistines. In total defeat, he made the submission, and, and he gave one last, one great heave, and down comes the Colosseum. The balcony fell. Ah, oh, can you imagine the... Well, the Bible said he killed more in his death than he did in his life. Hallelujah. But he never found but one level of submission. And that was when he was in total defeat. I wouldn't want that to happen to me, would you? Hallelujah. If I had come to that point, uh, it would be good to call on God. You can call on Him from anywhere. The psalmist said, Hear my cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayers. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto Thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock. That is higher than I. It, it sounds to me like the psalmist is saying uh, that if my back has been pushed to the wall or to the edge of the cliff, and one more step would send me hurling off the cliff uh, into eternity, 
from that position, I'll cry unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, if from hence you will call on Him, He'll hear you. Isn't the Lord merciful? Oh, can you imagine Him being so merciful to this? All right. All right, then, I think we've made our point here. Let's move uh, to the second step of submission. Notice that these are progressive steps. The next step uh, is half-hearted submission. That is, submission with reluctance. That is, it tends to argue, unwilling to submit. Well, how about that? Is anybody that way, we'd say? Indeed, we are. Half-hearted submission. We're talking about submission with reluctance. We, we finally will submit, uh, but we want to argue. We, it tends to argue we're unwilling to submit just uh, at face value of God to God's Word and to God's order, you see. Uh, uh, for examples, uh, there are many examples... But I think that Jonah uh, is a good example, don't you? Uh, He finally he finally submits, but you'd have to say that he did it reluctantly, didn't he? He argued with God, didn't he? Hallelujah! Amen. God told him to go to Nineveh and cry out uh, against that city. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. But Jonah didn't want to do that, did he? Now I think he had his reasons. Uh, I won't uh, expound on his reasons, but he didn't want to do it, so he went down to the to the dock. Maybe he uh, put it to himself like this: I'm going down to the dock, and if there's a ship going the opposite way, I'll take it to mean that I'm supposed to go the opposite way. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like I, I I had this joke about I bought a, a red and white Cadillac, and uh, oh. I think it was 78 model, yeah. It was 78 model. It just happened to pass the place and they just unveiled them. And here it sat out there. And oh, it was a pretty red. Red's my pretty color anyhow. And uh, it, was, it was a beautiful red color and it was white. And it was late Saturday evening. And I, they, of course, they was already closed. And I, uh, and I said, uh, I told my wife that I, I made a fleece. If it's still there Monday morning, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> of course, they, you know, I, I, I kind of took a little advantage here, a little round X, yeah, because <laughs> it's already closed for Saturday night, and they didn't even open on Sunday. I mean, there's not too much chance they're going to sell that car. <laughs> <laughs> before uh, Monday morning. So Monday morning, I went up there and got it. And, uh, and I said, well, that's what I said to the Lord. If it's still here Monday morning, I'm going to get it. I did. <laughs> hey, well, I don't know. All of my fleeces haven't been that uh, didn't that advantageous to work me. But uh, I believe, you know, God can answer any way He wants to, can He? Uh, you, how many of you know what God can do it any way He wants to? Because He's God. That's, that's right. He can do it like He wants to, isn't it? All right? So, we said that... Uh, so Jonah goes down there and he finds the ship going just the opposite direction, doesn't he? Well, you know, I'm not going to tell you the story because uh, any of these children can tell this story. But he gets swallowed up by a big fish. Uh, hallelujah. I mean, a custom-made fish come got him. And, and then he gets... Finally, he gets... The, the fish goes out and vomits him on the beach, and he hears from the Lord again. And what did the Lord tell him this time? Same thing. He hadn't, God hadn't changed his mind. God I'll tell you, though, now he submits. He submits now, he, uh, and then of being a city of four days, isn't it? Through, he runs into the city about a day and starts proclaiming his message. He got in a hurry. He submitted to God, but but you'd have to admit that it was with reluctance that he submitted. Well, I've been there. I've been both places here. I have. I've been on both. The, I've been to both levels here. I have been uh, where I could only submit uh, in defeat, and I have been where I submitted reluctantly. Oh, I think I've done this a lot of times. 
I have submitted uh, reluctantly. I hope that I won't have to uh, be reluctant again. Hallelujah. I hope that I can... Oh, well, why are we reluctant? Was it... It doesn't seem to be any question as to whether he had the Word of God or not. I mean, he, he knows that he has the Word of God. Well, I have been reluctant when I knew I had the Word of God, too. These are levels that we have to come through. These are things that we have to uh, defeat. These are things that we must overcome if we're going to reign with Him uh, in His blessed kingdom. Uh, I, like, uh, I like another one here. Uh, in Second Kings chapter 5, the story is told of, of Captain Naaman. Now, Naaman uh, was a great man of Syria, uh, and uh, the king thought a lot of him. And he was a man of valor, great warrior. Uh, in our modern day of, of uh, rank, he would be a general, at least a general, probably a uh, the most stars it's had, four or five, whatever. Uh, and, uh, but the Bible calls him a captain. And they'd, made, they'd make little raids over in Israel and bring back some captives. And uh, they brought back this little Jewish girl and, and put her in the home of Naaman. Uh, and she become Naaman's wife's maid. And, and, and it was obvious that Naaman was a great man of valor, but he was also a leper, and that was obvious. So the little maid said to her mistress one day, You know, I wish that uh, uh, Captain Naaman was uh, in Israel, said this prophet over there, that heal him of his leprosy. And somebody heard him, uh, an unnamed one, goes to the king and says, Hey, that little uh, maiden girl there said that there's a prophet in uh, Israel that could heal Naaman. Well, now, I don't know how the, uh, the little girl knew that, do you? Uh, you know, it seems to me like that if I had been uh, there and, and I was one of Naaman's um, partners or, or under his command or something, I would have questioned this little girl and I'd said, you know, I'd want to know how many lepers Elijah had healed. Hmm. I mean, if I'm going all the way over to a man that heals lepers, how many has he already healed? You know what she'd had to say? None. He hadn't healed any. You, Jesus himself said that there were many lepers in Israel uh, in those days, but Elijah healed only one. He only healed one. She didn't. So then, you see, if you get to, if you get to getting technical about, <laughs> about these things, you get beat out. Now, you, you know, the first question you'd want to ask is, how many lepers does he often heal lepers? Well, no, not often. Well, has he healed a lot of lepers? No, not a lot. Well, exactly how many has he healed? <laughs> None. Hmm. You see. Well, anyway, Naaman goes, though, doesn't he? King sends a letter. You remember the story? And, uh, and he gets there, and, and, uh, and things just didn't go like he wanted it to go. I wonder how many things we, we miss because, we, because of our preconceived ideas. Because uh, that we have too many preconceived ideas uh, on the method and the mechanics of how it has to come. So this guy, uh, this, this captain, he comes there and takes it to the king. king sends him on over uh, to Elijah. Elijah sends out his servant and tells him to go dip, dip in Jordan seven times and you'll be clean. He said, well, if it was just a matter of, of dipping in a river, I crossed two or three uh, that's got prettier and uh, clearer water than Jordan. And he was going away. The Bible said that he was, I believe King James uses the word wrath. He was wrath, wrath, full, filled with wrath. He was mad. That's Texas talk. He was mad, <laughs> insulted. And he was about to miss, about to miss it. Uh, and one of his servants come to him and said, Master, if he'd ask you to do something, um, you know, with a lot of fanfare, you'd have done it, wouldn't you? Yeah. If he'd ask you uh, to expound and explain military strategy, you'd have done it. Uh, if he'd ask you to show, uh, show him some close-order drill, you'd have done it. 
He just asked something simple. Why don't you do it? And Naaman dared to do it. He submitted. But I'd have to say that he did it reluctantly, wouldn't you? It was submission, but it was on the level of reluctance. But he got the job done. The Bible said he went down in there and he dipped seven times and came up and his skin was as clean uh, and as, uh, as clear as a baby's skin. He was completely healed of his leprosy. Leprosy is a type of sin and disorder. Hallelujah. And, uh, but he, all right, so he finally comes to submission, but he does so reluctantly. Now, if you've walked with God for any amount of time at all, and if you've done anything while you walked, you have, you've been here. I know you have been here. If you've ever prophesied, you know, Paul said all of you can prophesy, didn't he? If you've ever moved in any of the gifts of the Spirit, you did it reluctantly. I guarantee you did. You did. And you still will do it reluctantly. Why do we do that? Hallelujah. Well, <clears throat> I don't mean... <clears throat> see, you must do it carefully. Always do it carefully, but not reluctantly. There's a difference in being careful and just being reluctant, isn't it? Hallelujah. You see, we have to move in the gifts uh, with all carefulness. And we are barefoot. We move barefooted, uh, so to speak. Uh, I put your message... Uh, called the barefoot ministry. You walk softly, carefully, but not reluctantly. No, he submitted finally in reluctance. Now, I, I think again, as we read the story of the, of the apostles fishing in St. Luke chapter 5, about verse, um, um, well, at the first of that chapter, Jesus comes to the disciples and they fished all night. And... Uh, and he tells them to ask them, they caught him things so we'd catch nothing. He said, well, let down your net, your nets. And Peter said, Lord, we toiled all night, but, this is the reluctance, here he is with his reluctance, we toiled all night, but nevertheless, uh, if you say so, and they let down the net. And what happened? <laughs> oh, look. oh, I'll tell you, they, they brought in a, a, a load of fish, didn't they? I mean, they made, a, they made what a fisherman would call a haul. They really brought a man. He knows just where to catch him, doesn't he? You know, he knows just where to get us, too, doesn't he? He's got our address, I'll tell you. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I wait for the day that I'll know as I'm known. Somebody said, how is that? Well, the Bible said that God knows He's got every hair in our head numbered. Yeah, I know that the, some have interpreted this to mean that we'll know each other when we get to heaven. Well, if it means that, I'm glad I have it. But I don't believe, I believe uh, that it means what it says that we'll know as we're known. God knows everything there is to know about us. And when we find out everything there is to know about us, we're going to be in a lot better uh, shape uh, to please God uh, and to move in His kingdom. I'm telling you uh, that God's kingdom uh, is imminent. It's coming. Hallelujah. And somebody is going to have to rule and reign with Him uh, throughout eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope that it will be us. Praise the Lord. Uh, oh, my Lord and our God. There is a people uh, up, uh, coming just over the horizon. Isaiah seen them uh, years uh, and years ago. He said, uh, he said it like this, The wilderness and solitary places shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with singing. And the glory of Lebanon shall be given to them. And the excellency of Carmel and of Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands, confirm the feeble knees, and say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, our God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. Our God will come and save us. Then shall the blind eyes be opened, 
and the deaf ears unstopped. The lame man shall leap his heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing, and in the wilderness shall waters break forth, and springs in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, and in the habitation of dragons for each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes, and an highway shall be there in the way, and it shall be called a way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sadness and sorrow shall flee away. Oh, praise the Lord. That is a lofty position, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. Hey, indeed, it really is. Hey, hallelujah. Let's move uh, then into the, to the uh, uh, next level. That was half-hearted uh, uh, submission. Our submission, we said, with a re reluctance. Let's move to the next stage uh, where we get submission to a command. All right? Now, there can be submission, mechanical submission, to just a command and no dedication involved, just the command. This is a militaristic uh, uh, view of, of submission. Anybody that's ever seen a barracks full of soldiers knows there ain't nobody can gripe more than, than, they, than a barracks full of soldiers can. Ain't nobody can find more fault uh, with the system uh, than that barracks of soldiers can. <laughs> but, but, but the peculiar thing about it is uh, that they will stand at attention, they will salute, they'll fall out, and they'll run the opposite. They'll do anything that they're told to do. They, they'll gripe about it uh, after they do it. They don't gripe about it while they're doing it. They gripe about it later. But they, they, know, they are trained uh, to submit to a command. Well, I, I don't know the, about... All right, let's look at this a little closer. In Matthew chapter, five, in chapter 8 and verse 5 uh, through 10, the story of the centurion is told. You know the centurion that comes to Jesus and says, If you would, sir... You could come, uh, if you would, sir, you'd heal my, please, uh, in, uh, that's in uh, uh, St. Matthew chapter 8. Uh, we'll, we'll just turn over there if you want to. We'll look at it just briefly here. we make some pointers. Praise the Lord forever. Amen. What is all of this? Oh, it's showing us where we are. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy. Grievously tormented, Jesus said unto him, I'll come and heal him. Centurion answered and said, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. If you will just speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this man, Go, he goeth. To another come, he cometh. To my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Uh, now this man has a military, he is a military man. And he knows the chain of command. He knows that if his superiors tell him to do anything, that he does it. And he knows that if he tells uh, his subordinates to do anything, they do it. It's just that simple. So he says to Jesus... Uh, well, you don't have to come. All I want you to do is just speak the word. I just want you. I just want. I just want to hear you say it. And that's all I need. See, this is a this is submission uh, to to command. It's a, this is a good uh, position here. If we will be submissive to command, ah, uh, yes. You know, Jesus said, "Go into all the world." Um, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, so, and teaching them to observe uh, all things whatsoever I have commanded. You know, it's Matthew 28, and, you know, we used to think this one was only for uh, arguing uh, water baptism. Hallelujah. 
I was reading it one day, and, and I said, uh, he said, to teach them to, to observe all that I have commanded you. And I just thought, my God, what a, what a command this is. I just went back through the, uh, uh, through the book of Matthew and seen all the commands he made in that one book. And I thought, boy, you spend two or three lifetimes right here, you know, uh, if you teach them to, to observe everything that he commanded. Did you ever look at that? Boy, and think of all the commandments that he gave there. Anyone who's, well, you know, what was it Israel said to Moses when God spoke to them from the mountain and they backed away? They couldn't stand the presence of God. And they said to Moses, you go up and hear what he has to say, and then you tell us, and we'll do it. <laughs> Moses went up and heard them, and he told them, but they didn't do it, did they? <laughs> they, they just wouldn't do it. Hallelujah. Well, yeah, I don't think that uh, things probably haven't changed as much as we might like to think that they have. Uh, we still are reluctant to, to obey God after all the goodness that He's led us into. Yeah, know that God, uh, He only giveth wondrous things. He will withhold no, the psalmist said, He will withhold no good thing from them that walk up right before Him. Hallelujah. He, he, indeed, He won't. He won't withhold anything from those that will walk up right before Him. He is looking uh, for our submission to come to that place where we will submit unconditionally to all the movings and, and commandments of God. All right, we'll move on to the next one. I'll, I'll just close uh, with this one. Uh, all right, number four is submission just to a request or a subject, or sub, suggestion. This submission is sub, sub complete in, in our lives now that we respond to a mere suggestion. The scripture, one of the scriptures that I like to use for it is in Second Samuel Chapter 23, verses 15 and 16. And the story is here that David is fleeing in the wilderness. He's cut off from Jerusalem and, and, uh, and he is homesick. And uh, under the cover of darkness, he is confiding to one of his uh, close associates that I believe, well, what does he say there? That his, uh, oh, that his, uh, he, re he is requesting or wishing that he had a drink from the well in Jerusalem, isn't he? In the 23rd chapter of Second Samuel, verse, uh, uh, verse 15. Uh, and David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. He was, oh boy, I know it. I, I think I know just about how homesick he was here. <laughs> Amen. He's out there on the battlefield, cut off from uh, any uh, source of supply or anything. And, and he's just making a remark that, <clears throat> that he would, how grateful he'd be, how he wished that he had a drink uh, from this uh, whale. And in the 16th verse, three of his mighty men, they just overheard him making this request. It was not a command that they should do it, but they're ready to submit to just a suggestion. It goes like this, Lord, you don't have to knock my head off. <laughs> you don't have to holler at me. All I want to do is feel the pulse beat of your heart. Hallelujah. Just whisper the desire of your heart to me. All I want is a suggestion. Just just give me a hint at which way uh, you want me to go. That's the thought behind this. These three mighty men broke through the host of the Philistines, actually broke through, like in a night patrol, went to Bethlehem and drew some water out of the well and returned uh, to the outpost, command post where David uh, was, and gave David the water. And David... The big heart that he had, he, he, gave, he poured the water out as an offering unto God. But, but you see the, the thought here, the, the lesson is, 
Ah, that they were ready to submit to just a suggestion. All they wanted to hear was just the desire of David's heart. David, uh, whom Jesus was the son of David, Matthew tells us. Uh, uh, and all tonight, uh, if we come to the place that all we want to hear is just the desire of the greater David's heart to send us uh, into obedience uh, that was so dangerous for these men uh, that they put their lives uh, right uh, on the line. The chances uh, that they could be successful in this venture uh, was uh, the odds were bad against them. But they had heard the suggestion, uh, the breathing of the desire of David's heart, and nothing uh, could keep them uh, from trying to fulfill it. Lord, I pray tonight uh, that this would be uh, the heart that you would give us, that if we could hear just the desire of the greater David's heart, uh, that it would put us on a mission uh, that none could deter. Hallelujah. Father, that is my hope uh, for this whole congregation tonight, for all that are under the sound of our voice, for all that may hear this tape uh, all over the world or wherever it may go. Uh, it is my prayer tonight, Lord, uh, that you bring us to this place of submission uh, where all that we need uh, is just uh, to hear you breathe the desire of your heart uh, for the greater David, and we would hazard our lives uh, to fulfill that desire. Is not this a state uh, that the Apostle Paul reached? Hallelujah! That he hazarded his life uh, for the gospel of Christ. All he needed to hear, uh, all he needed was just a suggestion. Hallelujah. Amen. This level will prepare us to be like little Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 10. Uh, when the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, here am I. He thought it was Eli uh, speaking to him, didn't he? And he goes to Eli, the old priest. Uh, that's so old. He's he's practically blind and and um, and and almost beyond going. Uh, and he said, "What did you want, sir?" Eli said, "Go back to bed. I didn't call you." So he went back and laid himself down. And the Bible said uh, that he heard uh, Eli, Eli uh, Samuel, Samuel. And he goes to Eli again. Said, "What do you want?" He said, I didn't call your son. Go lay down. And the third time, he went back to Eli. And Eli said, if you hear it again, say, here I am, I, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. If you hear it again. I'll tell you, this old priest uh, had gone a long ways. He had tolerated a lot of things that he didn't sanction. Hallelujah. You know, just because uh, sometimes we'll tolerate things don't mean that we sanction them, does it? Hallelujah. Amen. I like to make a distinction between the things that I tolerate and the things that I sanction. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, uh, so uh, Eli had tolerated a lot of things, but he set the record straight that he didn't sanction it, didn't he? Uh, and he says uh, he knew that the Lord was speaking to this young boy. And he said, when he speaks again, you say, here am I. So he, uh, Samuel went back and lay down, uh, and the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. He said, speak, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm listening. Here I am, Lord. Speak. And the Lord spoke to him and said the thing uh, that I'm about to say to you, I will cause all the ears of Israel to tangle. Hallelujah. And the Lord uh, told him uh, of things uh, that were... He told him of a transition that was coming, didn't he? And Eli called him after the Lord had spoken to him and said, Tell me everything that he said now. Don't miss nothing. You know what the Bible says about Samuel? Ah, uh, that God didn't allow any of his words to fall to the ground. That is, God fulfilled uh, all of the projections that Samuel made. Hallelujah. He was a great uh, uh, prophet, a great priest of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Here, this, if we reach this level of submission, this is what will happen to us. Hallelujah. We will say, here am I. 
here am I. All we want to do is just to hear a suggestion. You know, we do this a lot in natural, first the natural and then the spiritual. You know, sometimes we, you know, you just make a suggestion to somebody, just kind of a left-handed request, really. But it's just a suggestion, and we move by suggestion a lot. Uh, when dealing with each other, don't we? And we learn to do that. Now, now when we do, do this with God, that's what we have to do, is come to this position. All right? All right, we, we said then uh, that this was progressive. First we moved um, on the level of defeat. We could only uh, submit if we were in defeat. Then we come to a half-hearted, or where we submit with, we submit all right, but it is with reluctance. Then we come to the place that we submit to command. Well, each one of the greater engulfs the lesser. When you get to unconditional surrender, you'll, you'll be moving in all of these. You'll find yourself doing this over and over. Anybody found yourself t- tonight in any of these? Did you see yourself? Yeah. It kind of speaks to you, don't it? Deep calls to deep. We're going on uh, for God. We're going to reign in the kingdom. Hallelujah. I believe that right now, right now in readiness, there's 144,000 people just ready to walk into life. Hallelujah. And then that's only the first fruits, and there's a great harvest, and this will be the boost that we need. Hallelujah. Uh, this will be the boost we need to come into the harvest. Hallelujah. The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and we will reign with Him. Hallelujah. The devil will be bound for a thousand years. Somebody said, oh, what a great day uh, that will be. It, it will indeed. Uh, somebody said, well, our troubles will be over. No, well, uh, we'll b- he'll be bound for a thousand years. But what we're going to do then? We're going to eradicate his influence until we walk into a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hallelujah. That's my hope. There it is. I've said it. Hallelujah. I expect to uh, rule uh, as much as I can right now with Him. And I expect uh, that that ruling and reigning will be increased. Oh, hallelujah. I expect to walk right into life, be translated, manifested, that that the whole creation is crying for, become uh, deliverers. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, That's what... That's what I am expecting. Hallelujah. And then we will write, and that we will eradicate the influence of the devil for the next thousand years until we, until, until we come. And at the end of that thousand years, he will be loose for a season. You familiar with these scriptures? He'll go out to deceive the nations, but, but the ministry of the blessed sons uh, will put him down. Uh, this will be the finale of his exploits, that he will be put down forever, and then the last enemy will be destroyed, which is death, (coughs) and a new heaven and a new earth will be presented, wherein will dwell righteousness. The Apostle Peter said, wherein dwelleth righteousness, but I'm going to make that a little bit more expressive and say, wherein will dwell only Righteousness. There will be no stain of sin in that new heaven and new earth. There will be no sign that Satan never existed come into that new heaven and new earth. And we will reign with him how long? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. We will reign with him forever and ever and ever. Worlds without end. Ages upon ages. Hallelujah. And He will receive glory through His church. He will receive glory through that that the church has produced. Worlds without end. We're producing something. Sometimes it doesn't look like it, but that doesn't discourage me. Because Jesus said the kingdom of God cometh not by observation. But it is in you. And the Lord spoke to me personally just not long ago and told me not to tabulate our progress anymore. 
Don't, don't tabulate it anymore, he said. It's, it's by faith. It cometh not by observation. Quit trying to tabulate it. I kept trying to, you know, see the church. I'd think, well, Lord, the church is in worse shape now than it was 15 years ago. He said, quit trying to tabulate it. It don't come by observation. Hallelujah. It is within you. Oh, praise God forever. Hallelujah. You know? And uh, so I quit trying to tabulate it. I just believe that we're near the, 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 the transition stage. We have to be. And, of course, I could, I could, but I won't go into all of the, the prophetic projections that are being projected by the Seer Prophets to the land. I began, I began one projection on May the 2nd of this year, and uh, other Seer Prophets have, have prophesied almost the same thing that I did. Some of them had heard my prophecy before they prophesied, but that's neither here nor there. The prophecy is a prophecy. And, uh, but I'm just saying, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Let it be established. If our projections are right, we're right on the brink of something. Uh, well, and then I heard the, the Spirit say, we'd be foolish to expect that things will continue as they are. They simply will not continue to cycle and recycle. For the Lord is doing a new thing in the earth today, yeah. And the Lord is bringing to maturity His first fruit, saith the Lord. Yeah, and if thou would, uh, if thou would desire to be in the first fruits of the Lord, yeah, you must dedicate your lives without reservation, saith the Lord. Yeah, you must submit yourself without reservation unto unto God, unto all the uh, laws, commands, and suggestions of God. Thou must. Uh, now submit, saith the Lord. Yea, uh, you must seek out uh, even a position to be submissive from, saith the Lord. Yea, and I shall place thee as I will, according to my timetable, saith God. Yea, know that if you will seek me with a whole heart, I will be found of thee when thou dost seek me diligently, saith the Lord. Yea, if thou dost uh, continue uh, to search in my word, uh, yea, for the ways and will of your God, I shall surely make known unto thee many things that thou dost not at this point know. For I have many things to say unto you, yea, but I cannot say them uh, now, yea, uh, for you cannot receive them at this point, but I shall bring you line upon line uh, to the place that you can receive, and then shall I speak to thee. Yea, I shall speak profoundly to you, and you will know, uh, yea, that you have been chosen uh, to be in the first fruits company, uh, as the Lord doth speak unto thee, saith the Lord. Yea, be not, uh, uh, let not your heart be filled with doubt. Yea, let the Spirit of the Almighty, even this moment, even now, captivate your mind. Yea, let Him captivate your spirit, saith the Lord, thou God. I shall speak to thee deep truth and great things. I shall I make known unto thee, even in the wee hours of the morning, I shall speak to thee when your head is upon your pillow, yea, and thou lieth uh, upon your bed, I shall the Lord of glory speak unto thee, and shall make thee to know uh, that thou hast heard truth, uh, yea, that truth has been unfolded, yea, uh, and it is a sound, uh, it is one sounding the alert. Yea, I am not trying to alarm you, saith the Lord. I, I am attempting to alert you. I am attempting to get your attention, saith the Lord, thou God, uh, and to let you know, uh, yea, that you are close. Yea, that you are the people upon whom the ends of the age has come. Yea, therefore greater responsibility lieth upon thee than lay upon the uh, generation that preceded thee, saith the Lord, no God. It is not that you are greater except that uh, as I make you greater. Uh, it is because uh, that you ha are the generation upon whom the ends of this age uh, shall come and has come, uh, and has fallen, saith the Lord, thou God. Therefore, uh, of necessity, uh, to fulfill 
fulfill uh, the plan of God, uh, you must move in exploits, and you must become a great people, yea, uh, but that will be uh, me making you, saith the Lord thou God, I shall make you what you shall be. I shall deal with your spirit and with your heart, yea, and I shall explain it step upon uh, step, line upon line again, saith the Lord thou God, and thou shalt walk in a light that thou hast not known, yea, for I shall continue to separate the light from darkness. It shall continue to get darker out there, but it will get lighter in here, saith the Lord. Yea, and you shall know that you are called of me, yea, and the choosing is mine and not yours, saith the Lord. Yea, therefore you may begin to rejoice in your spirit, uh, knowing that you are called of me. Yea, and uh, that he who hath begun a good work in you uh, is able to perform it against the day, uh, against that day, and against all days, saith the Lord thou God. Submit yourself uh, to me, and I will do the inner work. Uh, in your spirit, saith the Lord. Yea, for an inward work uh, is even now taking place within thee, saith the Lord thou God. Even now I have claimed and got your attention. Even now deep is calling unto deep. Yea, and even now enlargement is coming uh, to many vessels under the sound of the voice of the prophet, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, and even now uh, thou hast heard uh, this night, yea, as thou hast not heard before. Uh, why is this, thou might ask? It is because that God has ordained, yea, and deep has called unto deep, yea, and perhaps you've heard the same words vocal many times over, but never has it called so deeply uh, into your spirit, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, uh, for it is time, uh, and it is high time, uh, yea, that thou should... Uh, uh, is surrender all, even to me, saith the Lord thou God. Yea, for thou shalt not be privileged uh, to, to continue as you have continued uh, in the past, yea, uh, for, uh, for the, the system as you know it now, uh, yea, many changes uh, shall take place uh, in a short time saith the Lord thou God. Therefore, as often as you can, uh, you will assemble yourselves together and learn of me. As often as you can, uh, you will come fellowship one with another. Yea, and thou shalt appear again uh, and again uh, until, the, uh, yea, until that blessed day. Yea, that the Lord shall change uh, the order. Uh, yea, and uh, no, do not, uh, do not be one of those that would want to claim to the order uh, in your spirit. For the Lord thou God, if he takes anything from you, will give you something much better, saith the Lord. Yea, and you shall be pleased uh, to follow me, for I shall lead thee uh, with distinction, saith the Lord thou God. And you shall know my voice, and the voice of a stranger you will not follow. Yea, for I have spoken, and who is he that can gainsay? I have chosen thee, and who is he that can pluck thee? out of my hand, saith the Lord thou God. I have begun a progression in thee, and who is he that can hinder? Yea, I, the Lord thou God, I shall surely do all that I have stated, saith the Lord. Know that my eyes are not dim, that I cannot see uh, to the furthest crevices of my universe. My arm is not shortened, I can reach. Yea, I'll reach you uh, in your plight wherever you are, saith the Lord thou God. My ear has not grown dull that I cannot hear even the faintest cry in the darkest crevices of this universe. Cry unto me, yea, and I'll show ye, saith the Lord. I, you will see that I will hear, yea, and I will come unto thee, yea, and I will deliver thee. Yea, and I will honor thee as thou dost call upon my name, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? Praise the lovely Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I invoke the choicest blessings from heaven for this people tonight. Hallelujah. May you bless this people with the very choicest blessings uh, from the portals of heaven. 
great God. My Lord, just shower uh, this people uh, with blessings, Lord. You have already blessed them with Your Word. Bless us with the Word of the song and the music and fellowship and, and the Word of ministry, uh, tongues, interpretation, and, and the gifts of the Spirit, Lord. You've made Yourself real to us tonight, Lord. I invoke choice blessings for this people uh, that have been so attentive uh, to our uh, words tonight. Hallelujah. I invoke I continue blessings upon Brother Glenn and Irma and the staff here uh, and all uh, that makes up the family here at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp, O oh Lord. I, I invoke uh, the, uh, the healing virtue of Jesus to continue uh, to minister in Brother Glenn's physical body, Lord. And, uh, and as is his hope uh, that this uh, uh, affliction uh, will not return again. Hallelujah in Jesus' great name. My Lord, and now to every request that was made here tonight, to every request, give a thought pattern request. I'm going to uh, invoke the Lord in behalf of your request. Now, Heavenly Father, I invoke, I invoke the O Lord, my Lord, to answer every prayer, uh, every request that has gone by thought pattern here tonight, Lord. There are those that are thinking of a name uh, in another state. Yea, uh, in other states you're thinking of a name. Say that name. Not you don't have to vocal it. Just say it in your spirit. Hallelujah. Now, now, now I am invoking blessings and and accomplishments for those names uh, that are being focused now by thought pattern. Great God, my Lord, in Jesus' great name. I. Uh, in Jesus' great name, Lord, distance is nothing to you, Lord. You knew every need before we, uh, before we could say it, Lord. Uh, nothing can be too hard for you. Grant it, Lord Jesus, now. And this is a great people that you have privileged us to speak to tonight, Lord. I pray that you'd seal every word to their hearts and spirits. That is, every word that's profitable to the kingdom. If I have said anything that would be unprofitable, that is just folly, uh, uh, I pray that you'd cause us to forget it before we can get out of the tabernacle. But if it be profitable to kingdom, may it be retained in our spirit forever, forever and forever. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Glenn. Bless you real good. Praise the Lord. There's nothing that I could add to that, except that I believe that this weekend, that this weekend is a historic time in every one of our lives, that the Word of the Lord that's coming through each ministry is a solemn ministry of the hour, and, need, and, and we need to, to be serious as we retain and, and run back through our minds that which we have heard and are hearing this weekend. That God is, is, is God and He is sovereign. And we need to learn how to follow after the cloud. And not be rebellious against it. But follow it willingly. Because I want to be part of that time of the kingdom. I want to, to be part of that. And I hope and pray that everyone that, that is present here tonight, or that shall ever hear these tapes, will consider and follow after the, the, the word of the Lord. Father, I thank you for this word that's come forth. Seal it to our hearts and our minds. Help us, Lord, to have a determination to serve you willingly with all that's within us. Take away the reluctance. Take away all the other areas, Lord. Help us to be willing, to be willing, to be willing. Father, I invoke your richest blessings upon your people tonight. May we have a night of rest. May we arise tomorrow to praise and worship you together, together again that you may be glorified in our midst, that we may be of glory unto thy name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. For tape three, the conclusion to this message of Seven Levels of Submission by Jack Harris, please play Saturday morning service, 86 LH 11 5. Thank you. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com.
There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.